Alright guys, have to come back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. The drama is building going into the major four qualifiers with Thieves making it very clear that FaZe better not lose to them the next time they play after Slasher talked all this trash after they beat them back at major three. There were some caveats that Thieves had from their perspective and Kenny says, look, Slasher, you better not lose again or we are going to come crazy going forwards and Thieves also reckon they've improved significantly over the past couple of weeks. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to discuss. First of all, on a touch, he'll still be attending the Rocker Home Series in Wisconsin to meet the supporters. So, you know, good relations still, as you'd expect from Attach with his organization. We know that probably one of the reasons why Stanley was completely released by Ultra was because the organization, the players, felt disrespected by Stanley after he was benched from the team and he went on stream talking all this stuff, talking about, oh, you miss me, all this. And eventually the organization decided to just get rid of him. Now, Attach obviously isn't going to do anything like that. I'm sure he's still good friends with the players, with the coaches, with the owners of the team. He's been there for quite some time at this point. So he's still well involved in that and he's still going to attend their home series. Thought it was kind of cool. And that maybe there's a chance Attach comes back in, right? They play at this home series in Wisconsin. So if you guys aren't familiar, all the online matches that are usually played, Rocker managed to organize it so that Florida and Los Angeles Grillers would fly out to Wisconsin. And I think there's actually two other teams, maybe including London, flying out to Minnesota itself for the major five qualifiers. But um, they managed to organize it with the league to actually have some of these games occur on LAN in front of supporters. So really cool stuff I thought from Rock. Hopefully other teams will follow suit in the future. And Attach knows that if they if they struggle, especially in front of their you know home supporters, really okay, it's not quite Minnesota, but close enough against um, teams that are in the lower half of the league. If they lose one of those matches to Florida and Gorillas, there's a good chance that Attach might find himself back in the team with some other changes being made. So Attach wants to maintain that possibility, of course. Even Paulex, after getting released recently by London, said back to square one I'll do it right this time so yeah hopefully Paul X can find a way to recover could have been a difficult couple of seasons for him also wanted to mention though some of his potential partners in challenges because Ghosty was in challenges for some time now he's on the optic team and we saw just the other day that um you know Doug was revealing that Ghosty had been talking to Doug about being somewhat nervous about the spot that he has currently on optic it's obviously very clear that optic going forwards will only maintain this roster if they have a great success from now to the end of the season there's going to be a lot of top name players that are going to be free agents next season that are going to want to go somewhere. Obviously, we've talked about Pred before, but also there are other options potentially in Ghosty's role. But I would say there's maybe less chance that Ghosty gets replaced than Hoot does if that is going to happen at some point in the future. And Ghosty's kind of commented on this, right? So Doug said the other day that Ghosty was somewhat concerned that despite performing very well, the team's going to replace him in the offseason. Now, let's say Ghosty does get replaced and either they want to get Arsenal's or something, or maybe there's some other options they could potentially target alongside Dashi from like, um, because Ghosty actually said here in this clip that he's kind of playing more of a main AR role that he's not particularly used to. Dashi is technically the main, but in terms of actually using the AR, Ghosty generally plays that kind of slower role. So maybe in that sense, there are other players that could potentially be replacements for Ghosty. Not saying they should or need to do it or anything. I think he's done an admirable job for the team. And I don't think he should be too concerned about his position. And even if he was to be removed or not extended, I'm sure he'd be able to find another spot in the league without too much issue based on his performance here on Optic so far. But what he does say is that he's more concerned about the stigma around the role that he's using because he was in challenges dropping 1.3s. Now he's playing a different role, a slower AR role that he hasn't really done before. He's, uh, you know, calling the shots for the troops here with, you know, dashy shots and hook. That's not an easy thing to do either to in-game lead those guys to the level that he seemingly is. So I don't think he should be worried about his spot, but he is worried about the stigma of if he's their lowest performing player statistically for the various reasons we described and they start to lose more often, then Ghosty is start to be getting scapegoated, right? So you can understand it. I don't think he's concerned about uh, his future in the CDL necessarily, but he's more concerned about the idea that the stigma around certain players and performances, especially in roles they're not comfortable with, does affect players' stock going forwards if the team starts to not have the results. If Ultigood have gone out top 12, like, uh, would Ghosty still be on the team? I think there's a question there. No, I'm not really worried about my spot on Optic. I'm more so worried about the, the whole stigma of not playing statistically well and then you know you get bad stigma but you know people don't really take into the account the fact that I'm playing a once again completely different role that I've never played before in my life which is you know main AR IGL uh, even though I pull out the sub the way that I play the AR is like a main so um, I've never done that I've always been you know you go first I bait the sh 
out of you, you block for me kind of ordeal. Now, the other very spicy thing we've got to dive into, of course, is FaZe versus Los Angeles Thieves. We've seen over the last few days, Vegas versus Toronto. That's a fantastic rivalry that is coming up soon. Sandy versus Scrappy happening April the 14th. Unfortunately, I don't believe we're going to see FaZe versus Thieves in the near future, but hopefully it's going to happen at the Major. That's definitely a possibility given how good these teams presently are. They played back at Major 3. Of course, they played back at, uh, you know, Major 2, right? In the Grand Finals, and there's always a good chance they'll manage to find a way to play again at major four because two top teams should be there on Sunday. It weren't this time around because Thieves lost early on and then they went out in the loser's bracket in that remarkable series to Vegas. But Thieves had a bit of an interesting weekend. There was talk to him, Kenny that like um, they had some water bottle that came in that uh, had Juvie inside and the water bottle wasn't like um, functioning correctly and it just kind of exploded when he tried to open the thing up. It went everywhere, ruined his controller and that was right before the phase series after a very good day of practice leading up to that point. And Slasher was talking his trash after the series he said look I taught that camp how to play cards I own these kids is basically what he was saying and um like Thief said whatever he can talk his trash like we had our excuses at the time but not going to talk too much and basically what Kenny says is look fair enough Sasha got his one over on us there they destroyed Thieves of course in that first round match to the major very surprising I thought it was going to go the distance but there were some reasons maybe from the Thieves guys as to why and um you know Kenny said look make sure you don't lose the next time round because if you do we are making sure you know about it Slasher underrated i'll actually speak to this realistically i think exactly i think Austin's underrated definitely I think recently i think actually now like i think before i mean i think they still see him as like a top ar like of all time but i feel like people be disrespecting him okay granted he did talk a lot of shit to us and that was super disrespectful so i i think they next time they don't they cannot lose to us all i can say is <laughs> they, they better not lose to us but I think he underrated. Nah, you got to give nah. him his props in that sense. Nah, I'll say, no, that's what I'm saying. Nah. I said it in the interview. I said they won the match and they could talk their shit. Yeah. Oh, 100%. But don't we, lose we do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'd say underrated because he'd he be late flanking in SD. He's pretty good at that shit. I ain't going to lie. He'd yeah. be flanking. I'm just, I'm ready to start gaming again. I think that, you know, LED's fans should just be ready for us to be back on our bullshit. I think uh, a lot of people, you know, love seeing us lose and I think that's motivating us. Agreed. Okay. And people are getting a little I too happy. I see bro. a more aggressive team coming to the next major. I feel like we're <laughs> focusing up on our confidence and our aggression, but yeah. I think once we in and out, once again we forgot too. the time, yeah, once we, hey, yo. we forgot right. the, like the moments to be aggressive and you know play with this confidence that we know we play with. I think. Um, We'll be looking good. Yeah. So we know, of course, that Slasher immediately after, you know, threw up the middle fingers right up against, uh, I mean, there's pretty incredible stuff up against Draza on the other side because we know that's what happens before. And, um, you know, when Draza won the World Championship last year against FaZe, different FaZe team, of course, Slasher wasn't there at the time. But, um, you know, still, Slasher was most definitely letting them know. And Kenny's like, look, do that again. Sure, you won the series, fair play. But uh, that definitely means that things are going to get spicy. And to me, the FaZe versus Thieves rivalry is still probably the best in the the league there's a couple of other good ones optic versus phase is always fun but to be fair optic kind of own them lately to be honest it's not even much of a rivalry whereas between these two teams it's been more interesting over the last couple of seasons and that there's definitely beef between some of the players i mean all of the players really most of the players at least have some beef across the stage based on you know previous crew interactions and teammate history and all this stuff and uh, you know, this is a great rivalry and it's a rivalry that we expect to probably see more often like something like toronto versus vegas that's come up recently because of the scrappy versus stanley thing it might happen you know every other stage because they might play a league match they might happen to match with the major but phase versus thieves will happen a lot because it's going to happen occasionally online but it's going to happen a fair bit on land because these two teams are going to make it deep in tourneys but also thieves talking about how they've improved shane mentioned a few things about how they've switched things around in their structure they're currently going for and um and also like just playing better generally in practice and playing a bit more aggressive i think kenny said that sometimes they slow down a bit too much in games they don't play quite how they do in scrims and that affects them in their in their actual matches themselves so this is crunch time now for thieves we know that major four last year they lifted the trophy and they lifted the trophy at champs after that this year we've got major four major five and champs but i'm um, still the same story applies for the thieves guys to try and make it happen now and kenny individually hasn't been so good so far this year but we know what kenny usually does in the last few months of a title and that is now coming up so thieves have to prove themselves now i know there's been a lot of discussion here the last day or so 
what happens to Thieves at the end of the season because those guys extended after last season, I believe. Now, I'm sure at least a couple of those guys will stay on Thieves going forwards. But if they don't win anything, if FaZe continue to own them in that matchup, then would this team decide to stick longer than two years in a row? I think it might be worth looking into. I might even have a look at this. Like, which are the longest team of, um, well, stable teams in competitive COD history? Because the Optic Dynasty, I'm thinking, is number one. Over about, about three years, they were together. There was also the FaZe team in Jetpacks, which lasted a long period of time as well. They won a fair bit in Advanced Warfare, not so much in the games after that. They did win PSX, though, at the start of Infinite Warfare, that team, before um, you know, things split apart during the Infinite Warfare season. But since then, like, even the FaZe team in Cold War, I thought that team was going to last at least three seasons the way they were looking in Cold War but it took one poor year for their standards in Vanguard for them to change the roster like a team lasting more than two years is incredibly rare in COD history now um and Thieves it might happen for them but if they don't win going forwards Major 4 or Major 5 or Champs and if they kind of struggle a little bit I wouldn't be surprised at all if they consider changes because fundamentally Pred is a free agent Sib is a free agent like these guys are potential targets and um not to say that they would hunt do something like that but also if all the thieves players are free agents themselves and they might be tempted to go elsewhere then you know it raises questions right so I think it's just one to keep your eyes on because thieves after having stuck it out for a season and a half I mean Seattle as well they're coming up on their two years with this roster which is as I say it's very rare in cold history a roster last two seasons and um, there's a couple in the CDL that currently are but um, they haven't won something both of those teams in quite some time and they probably need to this year I would say in order to stick together going forwards a couple of other things to mention for you guys before we close out the video. Firstly, Brian Sutsal thought it was cool to see Insight because an insider player that doesn't maybe get the props that I think he deserves. Ever since he came into that Toronto team, it was quite remarkable actually his individual performances, but also the fact that that Toronto team in Cold War never placed outside of the top three. They were either third, second or first, like every event since Insight came in. And even since then, right, he's played 15 events. He's won three of them. You think about it, right? Okay, major two back in the first event he played. Okay, it was online back in Cold War and then the kickoff event last season in Vanguard and now Major 3 here in Texas this year. Five appearances in finals. One of those I'm sure he feels like he should have won at Major 5 in 2021, right? And this was his first event really winning in front of a home crowd because, or in front of a crowd in general, when he won online and then when he won the kickoff in Vanguard, like it wasn't quite the same as winning in front of an actual proper crowd and, uh, you know, he tried to do that at Major 5 2021. Didn't happen for him because Minnesota made the crazy comeback and um, average passing is better than 4, which is very impressive and was kind of Rookie of the Year in 2021. Don't believe they officially gave that out, but um, I think people would say so. And now he's transitioned into, obviously, he's much of a leader role now because Bantz, when he left the team, there were some questions who would take over that role that Bantz was doing in terms of guiding and leading the troops. And it seems like Insight's been that guy. You listen to their comms they had in the video they put out. Very impressive, I thought, how Insight was kind of guiding the guys and also making it clear after they won the first map of the series, like, this isn't over. Make sure we actually went all four here before we start talking too much trash to the crowd. Thought Jaden was doing some cool things here as well with putting together some teams of certain countries to do a Call of Duty World Classic because I believe the World Cup is actually trademarked so you can't call anything you do as a World Cup but you can um, well use some other alternative and they like using the word classic, prime classic, kickoff classic, this type of stuff so this would make sense as a concept for the CDL to do ideally every off season. They could form some really great and cool teams from around the world. There's an argument to say this should be Team USA if there was to be one, a BZ, Selium, Shotzi and Scrappy would be a very exciting team. There was also Team England that he put together here and I think this is probably the way to go. Basically he's got Inside Beans, Nasty and Afro which I think would be really cool. So yeah, looking forward to more of these over the coming days here. And hopefully the CDL is taking notes but very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.